This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geeks, show number 431, recorded on January 23rd, 2020. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the AverageGuy.tv studios. And Mike, I'm not sure, like, it, if it wants to snow, if it doesn't want to snow, if, like, what it doesn't want to snow at a weird temperature. It's like a slushy out there. Well, right? I mean, is your driveway, did you, get, did you ever clear your driveway? I did, did last get... night, but then today it's like this slush ice Weird. stuff that I didn't have time when I got home to do. And then it gets dark so early, so you have, better have a light on your snowblower. It's like a 7-Eleven exploded on my driveway. Like, there's just slurpy slosh everywhere. I, I don't like it, Dwayne. Of course, you're not you're not dealing with any of that, right, Dwayne? You're, I'm sure you got great. 65, highest. Uh -huh. I'm, right. I'm sorry. What is 65? this mythical thing you call is snow? <laughs> hey, it yes. snowed here once. In what maybe. year? Once every no, two years. It, this week it snowed. Oh, okay. Right. Well, barely. It's gone now, right? I. Well, I mean, it never actually even got on the ground, but it it was nice. It it kind of. <laughs> it was pretty. It, pretty right. Right. it, it right. was like it looked like rain, but yeah. floatier. Little little floatier. Well. We uh, actually, it is, it's kind of pretty this time of year with, uh, with the snow on the ground. We're getting fresh snow, a little bit of fresh snow every day. Of course, we post the fresh show notes. That's a bad transition oh, at, at theaverageguy.tv. Don't forget, you can join us live on our mobile app available for you free. That is not cold. It's hot and time for you to get your hands on that. Head out to homegadgetgeeks.com. Download the app, Android, iPhone, both available for you. It's free. I want to thank our Patreon subscribers for that. Don't forget to join our Discord group. Actually, both Facebook and Discord have been doing really, really well lately. So theaverageguy.tv slash Discord, theaverageguy.tv slash Facebook. I don't discriminate. I'm on both. Unlike Uyghur, I am on both platforms. He's got all Discord. So if you want to go out there and talk about gaming or PC hardware or really anything, a bunch of home automation stuff we've been talking about lately, Head out to our Discord group, theaverageguy.tv slash Discord or Facebook on the other side. Don't forget, Ryan's coming on here in the next couple of weeks. He live streamed last night talking about their CES coverage. They got a lot of great stuff. A bunch of us jumped out there to watch. Man, uh, Mike, I was listening to that, to their podcast, right? Yeah. Wow. Like, if you're into hardware, you want to listen to to those guys, right? So head out to thinkcomputers.org and then slash CES 2020 for their CE coverage. Did you take anything away from last night as you were kind of listening? There was a lot of hardware talk. A lot on. of hardware. Well, and it, that's bad for me because right now I'm in uh, hardware buying mode. Uh, got, got a few ideas though of some upgrades, but the hard thing for me is that a lot of the new stuff isn't compatible with the system I'm building. Uh, but I'm, I've am i got a list now of items. I'm like, oh, if I go, if I do a next upgrade, I think that could go in it. And then Ryan and I have been streaming on Twitch. So they stream on Twitch afterwards. And actually, Ryan and I, the past few nights, have been on Twitch together. And I think I'm going to get back to that after this podcast, getting back on um, on Twitch and, and just having some fun with the community. Tijoski is always out there stopping by, and it's, it's a pretty good time good. afterwards. So they good. run a good show over there. Yep. Bob and Ryan coming on here in the next couple of weeks, I think early February. And uh, But uh, get gets, we're, we're going to kind of cherry pick the best of their CES coverage. Yeah, and some you're a hardware things, person, right? come out for that show for sure. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to want to come out as well. And so, uh, Ryan, thanks for, for saying yes to that. Um, we have a retraction, Mike. Maybe first ever uh, Home Gadget Geeks retraction. Can you? Uh, uh, that we've what, officially what? done. There's probably been a lot that we should have done. Probably. <laughs> You're probably right. How did we mess up last week? Uh, so, yeah, we said Ed Navarro sent over the NVIDIA Shield Painter. It was I Ed said. Ramirez. Yeah, you yeah. said that. Yeah. So, Eddie right. Ramirez, PC Eddie. Uh, yeah. Eddie Navarro is a guy I worked with like 15 years ago. And that was just in my head. And that's the name just that you, you know out. how you think you're, you say something and you just kind of know it's right, but it's not. <laughs> right. That was the case. So, Eddie, thanks for your. Thanks for your generosity on that to, to Mike as well. Sorry, I, it's it's a sign of old age. I, I, I'm definitely getting there. So, And I apologize to Eddie Navarro, who has no idea that I even mentioned his name on the program, and I haven't seen him in 15 years. But Eddie Navarro, if you are watching, sorry that I mixed you up. And, um, and thanks, Ed Ramirez, for sending that yep. over. It's, it's still been a rock-solid machine. I'm still loving it in the bedroom. It's a perfect cool. machine for in there. Cool. Then one more update before we get to Dwayne, and that is uh, I have solved the Wednesday, Thursday night issue. So, Dwayne, last week we threw out like, hey, 
lots of things are coming up on Thursdays. What if we move to Wednesday night? And Mike, overwhelmingly, the live audience here, well, yes, last week was like, yeah, Wednesday's great. I mean, I, I had no, nobody said no. Then during the week, I heard from a few of the podcast listeners who were like, oh, I try to, I try to, you know, tune in from time to time and Thursdays are really better than Wednesdays. So I kind of thought about it today and I thought, hey, here's the deal. I'm going to keep it Thursday and just move it one to Wednesday when I need to. Like, that's, I don't, I don't know if I need to throw out the baby with the bathwater, right? I mean, I think yeah, we can, it'll probably be five, six Thursdays where I need to move it. I don't know, Dwayne, I don't know about you, but all the business stuff seems to land on Thursday nights when they want to do an evening event. Do you find that to be true? Like yeah. everybody does Thursday night <laughs> parties for whatever reason. Yeah. Right? Wednesday is not a popular night a for church anything. night here in the United a church States. Night. Like, yeah, yeah. Kind of church night. And then you know nobody wants think... to do it on Friday, right? You know what I think about meetings on on Thursdays? <laughs> <laughs> nice. I feel like we're watching meetings on Fridays. Friday yeah. afternoon. <laughs> he, Dwayne put up a picture of a baby's face. Are you saying that I'm crying? Is that what you're saying? Or you're crying? Or I don't. I don't. Yeah, it's just too much. It. Okay. Um, so <laughs> if you are, um, if so, we're gonna kind of. It'll be a compromise. So on the Thursdays, I'm busy. I just need to do a better job of planning and I'll try to get you at one point in time. And it still exists at the average guy.tv. I actually have a calendar out there that you can follow. Now I never populate it. So maybe it's time that I do Mike and, uh, and start getting maybe a, a little more advanced planning to let you know. So it'll be most Thursdays. And if I have a, uh, if I have an issue, I'll move it to Wednesday and I think we'll be fine. So, We've got some Wednesdays and some Thursdays coming up, and uh, that will be the solution. Uh, Dwayne Robinson is joining us. He's back to really talk about what he intended to talk about. Um, Dwayne, we had you on. It was not long ago, maybe. Uh, no. 4 four twenty four. Four. Was that when we? Is that the? That's the last time we had you on four twenty four. So six weeks ago or so. Yes. We should have waited a few more weeks to get 434, shouldn't we? If I should have planned that a little bit. I think we should just skip the numbers right on up because. I mean, who's counting? Like, what happened? Oh, wait a minute. We are. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to 32 and 33? I don't know where those went. Become but the uh, missing episodes. Dwayne, welcome back. <clears throat> yeah, it's good to be back. Yeah, good good to have you. We um, Let's kick it off uh, and, and not get distracted. with. A, I mean, it's already probably taken me 10 minutes to get into the show, So, but that's what we do here. Um, you had intended uh, to talk about some true home gadget stuff last time you were here. Um, you have been working with the Eero Pro and working in mesh. You want to talk a little bit about your experience uh, with that? Yeah, so I, and I've actually implemented multiple Eero systems now um, since I made my decision to go. Um, so the, what I got interested in is, if you guys recall, I was big into the Lowe's Iris thing. Mm -hmm. I think everyone yeah. loves me yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah. You did tell no, everyone how to get a really good, like, I think refund or buyback essentially, right? Wasn't it? I mean, I, I think that was the big thing that we um, had the walkthrough on. Yeah, because, like, uh, it's not like some of the stuff that Dave McCabe has recommended that just went, poof, right? Are, you're, not, uh, you're, not, you're not hammering on McCabe, are you? Oh, why not? He's not here to defend himself. He's I think he's a listener, artist. though. I think he's is a, he a listener. I think he is. I think he is. So, yeah. yeah, there's been a couple of things that we've all said hey this would be good and yeah. and then oh, yeah. it oh, kind yeah. of blew up but if you were an iris person then you then you probably got handled pretty nicely on the yeah. back side of it. Mm -hmm. and it and most people will remember that i switched over and i said okay i'm going to go into the virtual assistant space and look for things that i know will interoperate uh nicely together so i started looking at the assets between google and uh, the assets of amazon to pick which evil i wanted to go with and I chose the Amazon evil uh, over the Google eagle evil. Ugh. So I chose the Eero products because they're owned by Amazon. And my intention was I want all my home stuff to work together because I'm, if you recall, I moved from Iris to Ring when I did that and moved over to uh, the Echo with the with the home hub in it and everything. And so like Eros are in that same thing. So I was a believe, I believe that eventually Amazon will kind of bring these products together and you might end up with a mesh built into a speaker and stuff like that. Hmm. Right. Uh, so what 
so I went ahead and I moved on that and I actually bought the pro system and there's some good benefits to the pro and then there's the uh, standard system that uh, the pros look like the little rectangles. I was looking around to see if I saw the box, but Eero's got like three different systems that you can get uh, if you want multiple points. There's one that's like a little hub that's basically an Eero Pro, uh, one pro, and then it has like little things you plug into the power outlet. And then there's two of those that come in the box. Uh, I don't have any experience with those, um, but I will say those don't, um, depending on your home, uh, I would look at that one as probably the least likely to purchase the medium size one, which is like, it looks like a little, um, looks like a little box, but it, it's smaller, but it sits higher. Uh, the Eero pros are about, you know, inch or two thick or they're not real, real thick. These others are really tall and they're made for homes. And I think they're targeted at like 2000 square feet type of homes or the Eero Pro system, I think is a 3,000 square foot uh, type of approach. So I, the, the main thing, the reason I got the Pro was because it also has ethernet ports and can do backhauling over, um, over ethernet. And if you're familiar with this, it's that all of them use a back channel uh, connection between the endpoints. There you go. And the back channel import that you have is how the different mesh endpoints are communicating with each other and how they are sending the information around on like their connection back. And so you, what you can do is separate the data connection to your, um, to your backend network. So back to your router and all. Uh, and then you have that you optimize the client's connectivity speed. So almost sort of like a router more, I guess maybe more like a bridge in a way. Um, and so, but then they also handle handling like offloading to each other and being able to balance. The thing I didn't know I was gonna get when I did this is I also didn't know that it automatically, um, it automatically handles the frequency direction for you as well so like if you get just a standard router it's going to say 2.4 gigahertz network and a 5 gigahertz all of that is all on the eros and it all you get is one ssid and whatever is the optimal for that device it puts it on the proper channel and then it moves it based around load and load balances them across it based upon signal as well so you, so in the end, it actually does really well. The other thing that uh, was cool about it was that you get the mobile application and they just refreshed the mobile application since our last uh, show. So even at that show, we didn't, I wouldn't have known about that. Um, but it's really, really nice to have that. I, I found that I've only found one little minor issue and that is if you get some devices that are really old or don't support like certain levels of security, um, for Wi-Fi, you, it will not support those. So you, you'll have a, like a, a, a really rare situation, like uh, some little Chinese box for the LEDs on the back of my TV, for example, may not support the Wi-Fi security requirements of an Eero. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you can't turn it down. You can't say, I want it less secure. So, um, so it's, it's, I guess that's kind of good and bad depending on who you are. Um, but like you said, that one's, uh, okay, so see this one saying 6,000 square foot home. Mm -hmm. So so this is what I have. Um, and the way, the other cool thing is on the back of them, I don't know if, if you have a, if you can find a picture of it, but there's two ethernet ports. And there is no such thing as one is the primary or anything. Whatever is the first one you provision and you plug into your router becomes the primary. And there's the, what I was talking about before, the uh, one Eero Pro with two beacon, beacons. So you can kind of look at that. That's like a 5,500 square foot home um, and everything. And then there's one other version that's not the Pro that, that they offer as well. But the thing is, is that on the back of it with the two connections, if you don't use, you can use the connections for connecting into a router for the, you know, to plug it in for you to go back channel. But you can also do a lot of other things with it. Like you can, there's the other one sitting on the table right there. So they have a system of three of those. And I think that one's only like 2,000 square feet. So 
what what's cool is those those connections on that back you can also use them to be a bridge so with those things connecting let's say that you have a wi-fi connection and a location in your house that has no cat5 you can put an eero pro at that endpoint and then the ethernet ports on the back of it you can use that to plug in a hub or something and turn into wired connections and it will use the back channel hauling of of the wi-fi because it has the channel that you have clients connect to and then it has the channel that you have um, that talks between them and back to the router. So the, that's the cool thing about them is because it, the bandwidth between them and each of them have their own channel back to your router. So it, what you end up with is you don't still bandwidth for rebroadcasting mm -hmm. and things of that nature. So, so the same thing would happen if you plug a hub in, you don't actually use the Wi-Fi at all. You just use the back channel to get back and you can choose, you can like in my house, I have two of them that are plugged in an ethernet and the back all is being done that way. And then I have one upstairs that there wasn't an ethernet connection. So it's doing Wi-Fi back channel. And so all of that kind of worked out really well for me. And I would say that, you know, in general, it was, I was happy enough that I went and I got the other Eero system for my father for Christmas. Um, with his, I actually was able to put two in his house and put one right on the edge. And he's got a shop that's way up on a hill. And what, what I ended up doing is I put one in his shop and used the back channel to be able to handle all this. And then the cool part of it, yeah, there you go. There's the uh, back of one. So you can see it's just two ports and they're not labeled because you can use them for whatever you want. It, it doesn't matter. Um, but the thing with, uh, with the setup I had is I actually put in, my, my parents are getting older. My dad likes to go work in his shop up the hill and my mom doesn't want to walk up there. So what I did is put in ink, an echo dot dot up in the shop and i put an other echo speaker in their their kitchen and now my mom can drop in and talk to my dad all the way up in the shop but they didn't have the wi-fi coverage to be able to pull that off mm. and so so that was a really a really cool purchase their parents didn't really think it was that cool until <laughs> until i set it up and then they were like oh my god this is really cool and then i also taught my dad a little secret because they don't have a lot of bandwidth and he all his tvs and like the cord cutter thing i showed him that now with the combination of that and it's a it's a um an eero pro and again all by amazon and so you can say you know uh, lady a turn on or turn off the guest wi-fi so now my dad can turn on or off people who are coming over so if the tv starts not streaming good enough he can just turn off the guest wi-fi and kick everybody else off uh that are his guests so that he gets, his tv is not interrupted which is a very important thing for my father <laughs> well at least um, he understands his priorities dads, right yeah it, it's a dad thing yeah and and i have a prediction are you ready for my prediction far away my prediction is that ecobee will be purchased by amazon that is my prediction. And so that's why I shifted over to Ecobee for my thermostats. I had the Go controls, um, which were the dumbest thermostats you can get, like Z-Wave ones on the market when I moved into the house. Uh, that's what I put in. And they're good and they're fine, but they, there's, they're kind of dumb. I mean, it, you can turn the temperature up and down, up and down. And then, but the Ecobees have, here, I just happen to have one of these sitting right here. They have these little um, sensors that are smart sensors and they tell motion and they also tell the temperature and they go back in. And so not only do they t tell you like, okay, on my on this floor, does it have, what is the temperature in this floor? But those things tell the humidity. They also say whether or not that room is occupied or not. And so they use that algorithm to determine what is the temperature that should be set based around occupancy in conjunction with the remote sensors and humidity. So it, it actually works out really, really well. Now those have Lady A built into them as well, the ones I have. And I will tell you, um, in some ways, I wish there was a way you could turn off the speaker component of that and not have it shine a big red light like if you have an echo you know what i mean uh i have one back over here but you can't see it but it, it because i've muted the speaker it's got this big red light on it 
So on the Ecov on the top of it, it has it'll do a blue light, a yellow light, or a red light. Um, and the reason they're doing that is because that that's got Lady A built in. So those are the notifications and and everything. But what I found is because I have dots all over the house and they sound a lot better and I, I like them better, I don't really want to use the Ecov component for for Lady A. So but I will say if you that's mainly I wouldn't have bought the pucks. I really wouldn't have bought the dots if I had those before because the, the mics on them are amazing. The sound quality, you can stream audio. You can stream Spotify to them if you want. And those little, um, tiny, and those little tiny ones? No, no, no. Um, oh. on, when you were on the website, you yeah, can yeah. see the picture of the, the thermostat itself. Yeah, yeah. The thermostat has it built oh, gotcha. into it. Gotcha, okay. And, but the mobile application for it is really nice. Yeah, so that, that thing right there that hangs right. on the wall. Right. Um, but then that is from the app, you connect those sensors like I had. The, okay. the, so it's additional sensors associated to that. And so I have one on the bottom floor and one on the top floor. Yeah. So. And the sensors are just temperature and humidity. They're not listening. And motion. And motion. And motion. motion. But they're not listening. No. They don't have no. microphones on them. Okay. No, they are they are simply just additional sensors. And okay. and I will say that the experience of adding those was really stupid simple. Mm -hmm. Like they did a really good job at onboarding people. Um, and the, the price that I I think they're around two forty nine. I saw them on sale for one ninety nine at one point. Um, I think around Christmas uh, they were one hundred ninety nine bucks for them. I will say I, I really would recommend this. Like if you're if you're looking for an alternative to a Nest, this is this is nice. And not only that, it also um, I don't know there might be pictures of this on on the site, but they also it also has the weather. Like it actually has a visual where you can check the weather on on the display, and it takes the weather into consideration. So if it's ninety five degrees outside, and you're trying to cool it, it can preemptively, based upon the weather, um, be able to go ahead and say, "Oh, it's going to get hot today." So it, it'll like know to be a little more aggressive on the cooling. So it's it's just really kind of cool the way that they've done it. They, it's in, it's really takes. It, I would say that what we're running into is there's going to be the difference between like the go control was a dumb thermostat and this is a smart thermostat. And it, yeah. and it just, I have noticed that the temperature seems to be better and more stable in my house since I did it. And I also feel like I've seen a little bit of a reduction in the uh, power bill. Um, part of that is difficult for me to judge because it depends on how much I drive with the Tesla. So, but I would say that I, I do feel like I've seen a little bit of a reduction. And, and when I'm saying that, like, you know, no more than five bucks, right, um, type of thing. Yeah, and I'll second that. We have the Ecobee, and it's probably one of my favorite additions we've made to our home. And we actually saw a pretty drastic change. And I'll, But I think the drastic change for me was I, with my really dumb thermostat that was there before that came with the house, I wasn't taking the time to program that thing to turn on and off when we're there and change all the temperatures. So for me, it's the convenience of having the schedule. And then, hey, we hit the road for a road trip and I forgot to set the thermostat, just whip out the app, go into vacation mode, and you've saved power for the entire weekend. We So we've seen a pretty drastic uh, decrease. And also because for our home, um, we have a, some definite hot and cold spots. So we have three of those sensors in our house. And I think it does a much better job of only focusing on the areas that I want to focus on. And because we have a cold zone and uh, it doesn't need to worry that that needs to heat up as much uh, during the day. So I, I have it ignore that sensor, only look at that sensor at night when someone's there. Yeah, I love it. Speaking I think hot zone. <laughs> I'm, I'm I, yeah, that, that, that lead could go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but, yeah I, I, I'll, I'll second. I, I just love it. I actually, though, uh, I can't remember if you said you do the same thing. I mute my Ecobee uh, because she's so she has such a sensitive mic, and I have Amazon devices all over the house that she picks up when I don't want her to. Because yes. she's in a hallway, and I'm like, I, I'm not, I'm not there. I'm in the living room, and you're around the corner, and she's picking up before the one in the kitchen does. So I have her muted. I'd say 99% of the time. Yeah, no, that's I did the same. I had to go through them all and mute them because even when people were in a different room and they yep. would say something, like if you wanted to play music. It, it was so sensitive that it would actually pick it up and start playing in the hallway. Right. 
Yeah. Which and, is pretty impressive, I, actually, to be honest, because she got it right and she's really far away. I'm like, actually, that worked better almost than the actual Amazon devices do. Well, and, and on the Amazon devices, if you have kids and they start, you know, an Amazon device will link to an account. And then when you link it to an account, the music of that account is associated to that. So, um, so the problem I was running into, and this is, a, I wish they would fix this, is that if you have a child, you can't link a child account to a Spotify account. You can only do that with an adult account. So my issue was that my kids were using my Spotify account on their Echoes. So I ended up having to make them adult accounts for their Echoes to link to their Spotify accounts. So because what was going on is a couple of weird things were happening. In the Ecobee world, they would say something because now theirs is on a different account. So their, their Echo is on a different account. So they would say, you know, hey, Lady A, play something. But the thermostat's out in the hall, right outside of their bedrooms. And I would come upstairs and music would just be randomly playing out of both of them because it didn't figure out which one they were really talking to. And then the other thing that was really irritating was Spotify has this ability to say, I wanna remote control a speaker through the mobile application. And so they would start saying, play music. It would be doing it on my Spotify account. And I would be riding in a car, yeah. listening to music. And next thing I know, I'm getting, you know, let it go playing from Disney princesses. And I'm going, no, I will play Metallica. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then we're like fighting back and forth, uh, trying to get that control. And if, if many people have followed me to, much you'll know that i also dj so this happened to me while i was djing a an event once because i was using the app to control remotely switching the music and going to the playlist where i didn't have to stand via the music system i could just take my phone out and go oh okay that playlist i'm gonna i'm gonna jump it to this song and i could control it remotely while walking around the event so it's just one of those oh yeah there's the weather output so see i i really think this thing is a really good. I, I don't know if I can recommend the light versions, um, but I would say the one that I got is the only one I can speak to. And I, I will say that it is, it is really nice. I, I will also add that Ecobee needs to do a whole lot better of branding as to versions of their devices because they have no consistency in the name. So finding out what is the latest one, just go to their website, and try to buy one and the most expensive one is the latest one yeah it's the only way i can explain it and you have to copy and paste the name of what that people set what they call it if you're going to go hunt it down and it's it's really that's that's the only negative i have with it it was kind of difficult to get that done so so that's kind of what i've been doing with the home automation uh and the home stuff i haven't i mean i have also added um this nest thing to my uh what, what is community? that nest, what is that nest thing for the uh the nest audio mini. listeners oh okay yep. the nest mini you got a few um, of those now <laughs> so what happened is my family my dad got one of these for free uh because he uses what is the the google fi and they so they sent him one of these for free and then he got it and he doesn't know what to he doesn't know the difference. And I wanted them to be on the Amazon offering because that's what me and Tamara, my wife's family and everybody, we're all on, on that ecosystem. And that allows things like drop in across and things like that. So I wanted to keep them in that, not to mention if, uh, if your parents are anything like my parents, um, troubleshooting, I need them to be on the same stuff I'm yeah. on so that I can make it easy. Um, for them. So, so I, I made a deal that I would take this because I need one for work for, um, just testing. And I don't know it. Yeah. Well, and Tony says, <laughs> Tony says he just took down to, to your point, Dwayne, I, he says he just took down to today and went with nest and I asked him why. And he said, kind of what you said, scheduling wasn't reliable for him. Although most importantly had nest in our beach house, this fall and wifey said switch over. So, yeah. you know, if Which you're in you the ecosystem, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think either one really is going to 
Yeah, it's probably going to work. I'd love to know more on the scheduling not being reliable. The, I mean, I have, it is, you have to be aware of the setting that if you have it, like the follow me mode or any of the sensors you walk by, if you had it in a way, so like I have mine scheduled eight to five Mm -hmm. in a way mode. If I come home from lunch and I walk through the house, it's going to switch back into home mode. And now it'll, it'll switch back when I leave after I've been gone for a certain period of time. So I did notice that. And so I actually have to, um, I do come home from lunch every once in a while. So I either have to remember to kind of not walk by that sensor or to go cancel out its automatic home. But that feature, I, I, I like it better than I dislike it because there are times where, you know, Hannah's not paying attention to that kind of stuff, my wife. And so she'll come home during an odd time. And I do want the house to heat back up. If it notices someone's actually in the house during, and it's in away mode, hey, kick back over to my regular schedule that I would want. So there are a few settings there. But other than that, my scheduling has been rock solid uh, for, yeah. for what I needed to do. And I do like how for different schedules, you can tell it to only pick up from certain sensors. That's yeah, why yeah. like at night, I only pick up from the bedroom sensors. I don't care about the living room. Uh, and during the day, I don't care about the bedrooms because no one's ever in there. So we just focus on the living room. So the scheduling, uh, I have an issue with. It was just getting used to the fact that the motion sensors will trip it into going back into home mode. Yeah, and, and that's, uh, I was looking for the name of this thing because they, they push it pretty hard in their application. It's almost yeah, impossible they do. to turn it's off, follow me mode, which is it? that it's called Echo Plus. Oh. And the follow me is a function of the Echo Plus um, type of thing. So, and, the and you- Echo Plus. Echo Plus? Yeah, Echo Plus. Oh. E-C-O with a plus mark. Okay. And, oh, Echo Plus. Okay. Yeah, Echo Plus. Like, okay. Like this right here. That little setting is- I don't think I've even opened up the app in a long enough time, I don't think I've seen that. It, it's a new thing. Like they used to be the follow me and then it looks like they oh, rebranded it. Okay. And, and so I, I think in general, just, um, yeah, they, they like to push the fact that they want you to get those smart sensors and they want the smart sensors to control it. And when you fight that smart sensor control, um, they like in your case, like what you're saying is I only wanted to get from these particular sensors and in theory to them, they're like, oh, well, you're in the bedroom. So therefore it should go off. Yeah. But I am not necessarily running around in the middle of the night. So that's where you would have to augment it with the schedule stuff. But I think in general, it's, you know, like, like you said, it, I, I think it's pick your poison. Like if you're, if you're used to nest, then you'll probably not like Ecobee as much. If you're used to Ecobee, you're probably not going to like Nest as much. And then if you are in the uh, the G ecosystem, <laughs> then you're going to probably want to go Nest. If you want to go um, on the Amazon side, again, my theory is they're going to buy Ecobee um, because you already have Alexa being insert. I'm sorry, Lady A being inserted into into them. And this is a portfolio thing that they're missing and they have a strong history of buying companies like this. Um, so I, I think it's just a matter of time because I, I just don't see them trying to build that themselves. I think they'll just acquire at this point. So, but to- I think. To- but Tony did uh, in the chat room say he had a sequential temp drop during the night, was waking up hot. Iris did it flawlessly. Ecobee could not. So, um, yeah. Yeah, well, everybody's situation is a little bit different. I mean, that's the the good news is is that we're we're in, we're in an ecosystem, or we're in, we have ecosystems available where it all hasn't consolidated to one. Yeah, you know, we we've still got some options available in this area, and, which and is I pretty think, good. And I think on that particular one, I have the exact same scenario happen, and I'm going to take what Mike said to heart because I'm pretty sure that that is them with those smart sensors. Um, and so I, I'm going to try what you, what you said, Mike, we'll report back on the next time around yeah. and let you guys know if that, uh, addresses some of the temp, uh, the temps, I believe this is part of their eco settings where it's trying to save you money. And I do notice that it, if I, I turned, I, it actually helped me by turning down some of that eco stuff because it, by default, they turn it pretty high up to try to save you money, um, and everything. Uh, but what I, I'm a creature of comfort. I just want to be comfortable. So, uh, yep. so I, right I turned it down to minimum. And then I noticed that I don't have the problem that Anthony's talking about, but as much anymore, but I still, I still get that occasionally. Um, and so I'm going to, I'm going to go play with that now. 
Yeah. And, yeah. I, just, and, I have the follow me mode turned completely off. I'm like, I know what I want. Uh, and the only thing that it does is just the only thing I let it do is kick into a way mode. If you don't notice any motion for a while. And I, and I like that. And then obviously it still does kick on if you, if it's, it's like me, but everything else, AI. everything else I did manual. It took a little bit to figure out what Stupid we wanted. AI. Yeah, exactly. AI, I, I know what I want. And, and it might not even be the feeling in the house. If my wife walks past that thermostat at night and it doesn't say the temperature she wants it to say, that's the problem. Oh, so I, I, yeah, yeah. Like show uh, off my shoes. No, 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 no. We have it. Like I need the boys room needs to be at 70, right? Minimum. Cause the boys room gets really cold. They like, it, it can drop down to like 66. So a big piece of black tape and put over it. She'll never even know the difference. It's well, I did, but then instead of just showing the boys, instead of just having that sensor on at night, I just added our room sensor too. So it averages the two. Well, so our room yeah. 73, their room 67, it says 70. And, and she doesn't yeah. listen to this, does she? No. Okay. Oh, yeah. not. Yeah. Just she like Dave McCabe. She she like, oh my God. She's over there. She's screwing with the thermostat right now. I got to go. I'll hey, see you. Later. Check me. your phone. Just check your phone. You could, you could probably spoof it with your phone. Right. Exactly. What do you mean? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 So, so I think, uh, we also were talking about, I know that we, talk, that's kind of what's been going on home gadgets. And then, uh, I think we were saying that we wanted to talk a little bit about, some of the travel gadgets. Cause I, I know I travel a lot. Like um, there's a level in Delta that people don't even know exist unless you're like really into Delta sky miles. Like there's a thing called 360. And so um, like this past year I hit three times what you have to get to hit diamond on Delta. Wow. Um, so that they give you an idea of how much, and, and I didn't travel for the last two months of the year, by the way. Uh, not really, like maybe a couple little quick trips, but we were doing a uh, lot of trips overseas, right? I mean, mainly you're not doing. Yeah. in the beginning of the year last year, um, I was going every other week to Germany. Um, right. And, and that, that's where you rack up a ton of it or, and then I had to go to Shanghai and China and stuff. And so those type of things will really jump them uh, yeah. pretty quick, but when with that kind of travel you start to get into okay well what are the things that i want and you become a lot more cognizant of of different things around you like that you want to bring with you and especially like i i call it laptop diet or laptop bag diet occasionally that i have to just purge and so i started going on this um thing where toward the end of the year i'm jumping on uh, just this week is a perfect example. Um, so I left out on Monday night to go to Seattle, which is a cross country trip for me. Right. And then I'm already back home and was home all day today. So I was there for two days. Right. And, and it's not uncommon. I need to go out there for like some sort of briefing and then come, come back and, you know, spend two days out there and then come on home. And so, so what, Trips like that, I started noticing my, it, it was just too much. Like I was carrying too much heavy stuff. And if you do international too much, uh, you really start to go, hey, well, how can I cut down? Um, and one of the main things I started on is my, my New Year's resolution, <laughs> which is, it's called USB-C. <laughs> and so I said, I really am sick of carrying 400 chargers with me with, for all these devices and everything. And especially if you're going international, it's a real pain because then you're having to have, you know, the adapter to the adapter to the adapter. And it's just, it's a huge pain in the butt. So I figured what I would kind of go over is I found a few things that I thought were really cool that other people might like. Um, and some of them actually evolved since our last, uh, last uh, show. So from 424 to 431, I've actually added something that I think will be really good. Now, the first thing I, I, I'll do is uh, if you don't know much about a lot of travel on a plane, the most important thing in the world is headphones. It is the most important thing. And um, a lot of people have been jumping on the bandwagon of going with these Apple uh, AirPods and then AirPod Pros and all this type of stuff. And I, and I have a distinct problem with AirPods. Like my kids have AirPods and I, I mean, yeah, it's it, and I'm not the sound quality guy that's gonna go, it's just not that. It's, it's the fact that they're a 
premium cost. However, they are not usable when I switch to an and like I might have an Android tablet with me that I'm using or something. And 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 we'll talk more about the Android tablet thing when we kind of start talking about XCloud. And so I'm not convinced that I'm always going to be on an Apple iOS device. And I need things that work across all the devices that I have or even be able to pair to two devices at the same time and, and things like that. So I'm, I'm a little particular about that. Um, and so what I ended up getting, and I, I get, you just showed a link to it, was um, a thing called the Jabra Elite Active 65Ts. Um, now, this specifically is made and that has the ability for you to like run and it's got and they're sweat proof and all this stuff. Um, the reason I like the Jabbers, Jabber ones is because they do a really good job at call management and being able to take cell phone calls and stuff. So if I'm walking around an airport, um, I, I like this. Like they have here like where you can hear through if you want or you can turn that off. They're really good at sound isolation. They're not noise canceling. Um, and so I had these and I had the blue ones. And I would say that these are amazing uh, for what you're getting. Uh, they're not as expensive as some of the others that, that are on the market, but I'm going to tell you to navigate on this. You can click on headsets and you can see the one that I'm going to say just dethrone this. Now these charge with micro SD uh, connection and you can see it's 15 hours of battery life um, that's inside of those. And, and that's including the case, the charging case. So if I'm going to fly from across the country, it can take about four and a half hours. If you add how long I'm sitting on the plane, I probably need somewhere around six or so hours of battery life, or I'm gonna have to take them out and pop them off. Um, so they have a new thing they just released, which is the Elite 75T. These have 28 hours of battery life wow. in the when you have the charger, a uh, charging thing. And I'm gonna actually open up these the active, elites. The the active 75T or just the straight 75Ts? Just the straight. The, okay. Uh, they're specifically called the Elite 75T. That's them. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so you can see 28 hours versus 15, right? They're USB-C and in the way that they work. Um, they are basically about the same weight as the others. Now, here is the case to the 70, the, the 65s, okay? I don't know if you can kind of see that. Um, and then when you wanna open it, it's got like a little push thing and then they're, they're inside there, okay? And they sit at the top. Now, that's great. This is the 28 hour version, smaller, with USB-C support and the headset is getting, they say seven and a half. I just used them and then my plane got delayed on this last trip. I'm getting more. I'm getting more than the seven and a half uh, on it. And not only that, instead of having to push on it, it's all magnetic and everything. So they open really nice. It's got that nice feel to them. But there's one other thing. I actually didn't, everyone just thought that the difference between them would be the battery life. Um, they are not heavier. I can't tell a difference between them. I actually feel like they feel more comfortable in my ear than the, than the 65s. Um, they're 10 bucks more, as you can see, uh, for them. And you can get them in just normal colors. Now they're not, I don't believe that they are sweat proof. Um, so I wanna make sure that that's clear but the base response on these things are sick. I mean, I have not heard a set of headphones outside of a Bose over the ear, quiet comfort or something like that, that will even compare. I mean, like you, if you're listening to it and you've got something with some bass response, you almost feel like, if you guys know what I mean when you hear bass and you feel like you can feel it. Yeah. It, it, I don't know how it, yeah, I don't know how to explain it other than it feels like you can feel it. And, and these things, I honestly had no intention for anything other than I just wanted a USB-C version of what I already had to reduce the charger. And it may be one of the best purchases I've made in a very long time. And I mean, and 
I, I just can't recommend these enough. Like they are absolutely amazing earphones. And I mean, even the box is smaller, but I would, I would say definitely go out for, for these. It's worth the $10. There's not even a question in my mind. They should have discontinued the 65 T's because the, they're just so much better. It's like a light year maybe, jump. Maybe the price will drop. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it does, it says, and I will tell you, and the call quality is is better as well, because I've already had people talking to me and they they can't even tell I'm at, at an airport when I'm wearing them, um, which is a good thing. And I do still carry the over the ear, uh, ear headphones, the, the Bose Quiet Comforts, and I'm looking at the new version with USB-C support. My boss has those. Uh, we were looking at them. Those are a lot lighter, um, but the carrying case is is wider but thinner and i'm worried that that's gonna fit in my bag a little weird so i don't know we'll stay tuned i'm sure i'll probably end up getting them because i'm a if i'm nothing more than a pain in the butt i buy too much crap um all right so it, Dwayne, the so it's interesting so the 65s are are water and dust proof so to speak right the, the actives yeah yeah the the, the the 65 the elite 65 t's and both the 65 t's and the active 65 t's are both water resistant but when you get over to the 75 line they don't you have to get the active version to get the waterproof the yeah. 75 t's just the straight 75 t's don't uh don't offer well i guess they do say dust and water protection so i guess that's the yeah. same thing I guess. That's yeah, and yeah. and you just need to know if it's worth it too, because I, yeah. I would I don't think you're going to find a difference in the sound quality between the two. It's what the difference between the two that I have, because I have the active and the non-actives, um, and the like the 65s are actives. Those were um, they're they're rubbery to the feel, mm -hmm. um, where the others are more just plasticky. And I think that's really the main difference between them is just the material they're made out of to uh, do like. Uh, not allow sweat to come in so um mike you know you're an airpod guy and you really like yours apples continue to go with the kind of the stick out of the ear model i'm seeing everyone else including microsoft go kind of with the with the coin model right where they're just trying to make that the size you know that that basically the recess in your ear any thoughts from you on does it matter to you that that thing's hanging down and as opposed to maybe maybe being a little more discreet in the air certainly from what Dwayne is saying call it doesn't it doesn't have effect on on um on the uh the reception on the call that well, that would have been my only concern is that i it's it just it surprises me that they can if you don't have the stem and especially Dwayne, when you said they can't tell you're in an airport I mean, I, I'm baffled by the technology that it can drown out everything and all of a sudden almost like fo like form a cone, right? Where it's only picking up that sound directly That's from being your mouth. Forming. That would have been my only concern. Uh, the AirPods for me, just being in the Apple ecosystem, I'm not on Android. I don't use any Android products and it works pretty well for me. I am disappointed because I do have the pros now. I'm disappointed they didn't go USB-C on the case. But yeah, for why? right now, well, I think I think the reason is for right now everyone's phone they have not gone to USB-C on the phone they have on their iPads but they have not on the phone yet it's still lightning that'll be next year and so I think their thought is if pe when people are using these with their phone that would make an Apple user an iPhone user have to carry two different cords Look. whereas now I can carry one um, so I think it, next year when they switch all over to USB-C I'll be a little mad because I'm actually due for an upgrade on my phone probably next year, maybe the year after. And so I, what they've done, though, they did this last time. They sell the, another case to you. Like this last time uh, for the original AirPods, it was the, the wireless charging case. It was like an extra 60 bucks. So, I mean, I think they work well. I have been extremely impressed with the AirPod Pros. The regular AirPods, while I liked them and they were convenient, they were nothing to write home about. I would never have said, you know, I, I would have said if, if you if you got the money and you want to spend them on them, uh, go for it. But the AirPod Pros are the first ones where I've actually said I would recommend these to people. I think they're a good set. The transparency mode, uh, easily switching from transparency where it's using the microphone and boosting your outside world, even while having a tight seal, uh, really makes a difference. I That's the mode I'm always in. I rarely turn on noise canceling mode because uh, usually I still want to have be able to hear and it eliminates that kind of almost like you kind of want to like pop your jaw a little bit because you because that mm -hmm. that that seal that it's in the ear so transparency mode really helps that um, that has that mode really has made those 
something that I keep in at work almost all day because I can still hear. I can switch over to noise canceling if I do want to just really focus, but I rarely do. Uh, they, they work pretty well. Um, again, it's just going to be the charging cable in a year that I'm going to say, come on, Apple, you should have gone USB-C on the phone this year and the case. You went with it on the iPad and yeah. on the computer, right? Like they've the, the weird part to this to me is Apple has been the company's like, get rid of the headphone jack, go to all USB-C on the laptop. There is no other port on their laptops besides USB-C. Um, <laughs> and so then they went, yeah. So then they went on the iPad. I'm just shocked they haven't brought it to the uh, to the iPhone yet. But for right now, I'm going to be glad because I have these lightning cables everywhere in my home, at my office. I have like three in the car. They are scattered around the house. So I'll, I'll be uh, making a bulk Amazon purchase once I upgrade my phone. Yes, you will. And then, and then it's going to irritate you that anything that's not USB-C is just going to yes. irritate you because well, I have the iPhone 11 Pro and this is the most annoying thing because I have an iPad Pro. I have a MacBook Pro 16 inch. Yep. I have the new one and I have this. And the only device that I have that I have to carry a special cable for is this stupid phone. It's right. so annoying to me. And, and, and it's also because I keep an extra so that I can plug it into the car, like a rental car. So I have one to charge with and one that I have to plug in a rental car. And guess what? What does the cable look like that I use for this that comes with the phone? Okay. It comes with the phone. What, is it, what does it do? It's lightning to USB-C oh, and, and to a USB-C 18-watt brick. <laughs> Guess what is the one you need for a car? USB-A. Yay. What? So, you have to, so I have to carry not one, but two lightning cables just to bless Apple with my phone decision. Which Next year. Next yeah, year. So, but that's okay. Because the other thing is, is that if you are thinking like uh, Surface Line, right? Surface Duo is going to be something where I'm not necessarily thinking I'm going to be on an Apple phone by the end of the of the 2020, right? So I'm preparing myself for that situation, um, pretty much, and and just for what else is in the in the bag for like a big trip. Right now I'm traveling with uh, I've got an i9 uh, MacBook Pro 16 inch because I have to run some emulators that have to run on Mac OS or, and I run Windows as well on it. And because that device has a 97 watt charger USB-C, it won't pop a plane circuit where hmm. my primary laptop that I, if I'm going to travel and I need to get a lot, like I'm, I need power, um, that the machine I'm carrying for that is I now have um, a razor blade 15 advanced um, with the 2070, uh, the R RTX, is that correct? RTX 2070 yeah. NVIDIA graphics card, 240 hertz screen. I upgraded it to 32 gigs of RAM and I'm going to put a two terabyte SSD in it. You do some pretty good gaming on that thing. And not only that, I have the USB-C um, docking station for it with a 1080 a GTX 1080, which is, you know, I'm going to sell to Mike so I can go get a, a more aggressive graphics card. Right. Um, so, so I would say, like, I will tell you, if you're looking for a laptop, oh, man, that thing's good. It's the same weight as my um, MacBook Pro 16. And I'm just telling you, this thing is a beast of a computer. Um, that's actually what I'm talking to, through to you guys right now. But remember, we were talking about light and weight, lightweight, and I kind of alluded to some Surface stuff. Then I did make a purchase because I wanted something that I could basically throw in a bag, go on a two-day two day work um, thing, and not worry about other things. Just take it. And that is, I went and bought a Surface Pro X. Oh. And, um, and I have the one with, I, I have the case with the pen and all. Are you going to put that in a service chat, Jim? <laughs> Over... so, no, that was the chat for, uh, for Racer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I, I will quantify which one I have because people will ask that question. I have the 16 gigabytes of memory. And I have the, um, I think the 256 gig SSD in this one. So it's not a cheap one. Um, I, 
The good thing is my uh, iPad Pro has an LTE uh, SIM. I have the LTE version and I can interchange between the two of them, the LTE coverage. And this thing works with LTE with no problem. Um, and, it'll, and you can even say, well, you know, even if the network starts getting a little sketchy um, on Wi-Fi, flip over to LTE or, and things like that. So it's got a lot of control on how you're gonna do that. And there's been a lot of people talking about this device and you get very mixed answers on what people think about it. Uh, Cause if you're not familiar, this is the ARM based version. It's got that, um, that SQ processor, which is basically um, equivalent to performance of I think an i5. So it's a three gigahertz processor in it. And it's the one where we basically, the and I say we, because if you didn't know, I work for Microsoft. Um, we boosted the wattage into the processor, I think to like seven watts or something like that. So it's actually over, a, like basically turning up the wattage in order to be able to get a faster chip. So you're sacrificing a little bit of, um, of like battery life in order to do it. I don't really think people were thinking because they said it was going to be ARM. They were like, oh, this thing's supposed to have 20 something hours of battery life. It doesn't have 20 something hours of battery life. And depending on what you do with it, you will get very different results um, on your battery life. So if you're running a lot of um, non-ARM compiled process processing where it has to run an emulation, you will find that it will get way worse battery life. And we've now since released Edge Chromium. In Edge Chromium, there is an ARM-based version. So if you get this, if you get a Surface Pro X, do not, whatever you do, run Google Chrome. Do not. It it will eat the battery life on this thing. You need to go ahead and make the move over to Edge Chromium. All your stuff should work as far as uh, extensions and stuff like that. But the but because it actually is compiled for an ARM. We're talking it will double your battery life between the two. And the performance will be at least 2x off of it. So, um, yeah, there's a big difference in an ARM compile and a non-ARM compile. Now, I can tell you I can run Visual Studio Code on it. I'm running full Office Suite and all that. And so what I run into is people want to compare this thing to other things. Mm -hmm. And it is not something to be compared to. It, 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 you have to have the right use case for it. And if you have the right use case, it's amazing because it's so light and it's so easy to carry and, and it's USB-C, <gasps> two USB-C ports. And I mean, you can use the quick charger that comes from, uh, from us on it. Um, but the other thing is that it, the quick access to the back where you have like the SSD and everything is all back here. You really can't see it from here because it's all black. Um, but there's a little tray back here and it's magnetic. So it's really easy to switch out the LTE connection. So I switch it out all the time. If I'm going to use it and I just want to just take this, then I'll take it. And you can put, you, if you put uh, Netflix on it and you want to download to your Netflix and stuff, you can watch it. Matter of fact, the screen on this is actually better than the iPad Pro in my opinion. And the battery life, even if you're running emulation mode, um, I'm, I would say I could easily get seven hours. And my iPad Pro only gets about seven uh, if I'm really using it to like watch movies and do stuff. And so what I would say is it's an alternative to an iPad Pro for somebody who travels for business and wants full office suite because the, uh, the outlook that runs on this sucker compared to the outlook that runs on an iPad Pro is not even comparable. The typing experience is not even comparable, but is it, you know, or am I going to be able to do the Hulu or read an e-reader or whatever type of thing? It's not made for that. So don't compare it to that and don't look at it from benchmarking. It's not a gaming PC. It's not a, you know, it, it's not even an ultra book. So you kind of have to look at it for what it is. And if you like what it is, then you end up loving it. And so that's why everybody is very up and down on this thing. Because if you kind of go, okay, I'm going to work on it and I understand what I'm dealing with. You don't run into that. Like I had some somebody that I don't reply to um, to reviews or videos or anything. I watch a lot of it, but I don't actually reply to a ton of that stuff. Um, 
I don't know. I just don't like to do that. But I will go ahead and call out Engadget was the dumbest review of that device I've ever seen in my life. They literally say, well, I try, I downloaded the 64-bit version of Slack and tried to install it and it failed. Well, that's just you're being dumb. I, you know, I, ins I went and downloaded the executable for, uh, for Outlook and tried to install a full desktop Outlook on my iPad Pro and it failed. Well, no crap. It's not made for that. So, so I mean, if you're if you're gonna do, you know, if you're gonna really look at it and you like it, the reason you pay the premium is gonna be ultralight, be on that cutting edge, be on ARM, really want LTE in it, and you just want a lightweight package that can also act as an iPad Pro. Well, I mean, it's literally between an iPad Pro and a PC. And someone who like like you just mentioned, someone who knows what they're doing when they get into it, right? This isn't the device like. And Gadget was probably going at it probably more from a perspective of this isn't what you get your grandma to surf around on and to have as her computer because, you know, the installation, you got to know what you're installing, which versions, uh, what to run on it. So probably a little bit more of a, of a techie person, maybe not more of an average guy device. Is that, is that fair? It's a good CEO device. Okay. A CEO so, who has a tech team who sets it up for him and doesn't let him do any installs, right? No, because if you want to install something, um, like you're not going to, most of the stuff you would install, you know, you install from the, you can install from the store. If you want to install, uh, you know, a normal Windows app, you can, you just can't install the 64 bit versions. But, um, you know, if you're going to install an app on your machine, you're always going to get asked 64, 32. I mean, you're, you'll get that as long as you understand that you need to install 32 bit versions of applications where you get into weirdness is going to be when you find something like that application that runs with your printer, the right. complete no value add thing. Um, those type of things are a little weird. Um, so I would, uh, I would agree with you, Mike. I think it's more towards somebody who is capable of the techie thing or someone who just doesn't care and has yeah. has somebody that takes care That's, of that for them. Yeah. But as well, we see uh, applications get compiled for ARM, I don't think you need to redesign your application. It's not like, oh, I need you to go build an application that works on an iPad. It's you just need to take your Windows application and run it through a compiler to compile it for an ARM chipset. And if you do it, we're talking massive battery life. At that point, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I can go all day. I can go two days with that sucker, you know, but you, it's, it's the problem is, is you're going to run those 32 bit apps and then the battery sucks down. And yeah, so, which, you know, we, I make a comment about that, about making that more of a techie feature, but then on the Mac side, you've got Catalina that came out and they went all 64. You can't run any 32 bit apps and everyone, Catalina's you know, the, the average person didn't know what that meant. And all of a sudden their printer software is not working. Their scanners aren't working. I have this app that's not working and they're like in total shock. Um, it, it, talk about something that was not user-friendly for a majority <laughs> of the Apple users. You know what? Um, Catalina. You know, I mentioned this to someone at work and their first response was, wait, is that why my printer stopped working on my Mac? I haven't been able to figure it out. Like I updated and they had, they still, like they had updated however long ago and they've just written off that printer as, yeah, I just don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it, just get another it was one. working and now it's not. Well, let me tell you, Catalina, and is, I'm going to make a little bold statement here. Catalina is the Vista of Apple OS. <laughs> because, so? yes, it is like... atrocious. I have been using Mac OS for a long time, guys. I mean, a long time because I'm on the, my third Mac, right? Because I have to run it for work and I have to test things. Like we have stuff that has to run on the Mac and I have become like the guinea pig guy that ha I have a Mac on my left and I have my PC on my right. And I bounce between them uh, all the time. So I try to force myself to use the Mac. And when we went to Catalina, man, that thing asked me all the freaking time, like, do you want to approve or deny? Do you want to approve and deny? Oh, wait a minute. You need to go into the privacy setting and click the click the lock. And then when after you click the lock, you got to go find the sub setting in order to be able to check off to let this application do this. I mean, try using Teams on Catalina. Holy crap, man. You want to share your screen? How many... You got to go like 15 settings to set in that crap. And I'm like, no. And the the thing and stability is insane. Like at this 16 inch MacBook Pro, I can open it up. And sometimes the graphics card is so jacked up with the drivers that the colors are all like super contrasted. 
and there's nothing you can do about it. Like you just have to shut it. And maybe if you shut it and reopen it, it'll, I I'm telling you, it is atrocious. It is the worst operating system ever made by Apple. Well, I, I, I agree. I have a lot of those same issues with, especially with the approvals. Like I get, you're trying to make it secure, but no one has said, Oh, good thing you had this pop up. I'm not going to install this app. Look, no one ever has, has, has said that, right. Everyone's like, okay, I'll follow the 10 steps you maybe do. Um, but, uh, the one thing is the one thing I like about what they did is I think this is a good prep OS for future OSs. Like for example, going APFS and now they've split out the data volume from the system volume, right? Like those are smart moves that have caused a lot of angst, especially for like backup software and stuff because it's the first iteration. And yeah. a very smart move security wise to go for. So it's, I, the, it's the same growing pain we had in Vista. We well, went, well, I, it, I, that's my it's point. the exact I, same problem. I, I think it's a very good correlation between the two because I think, and I don't, I wasn't around with windows, but it seems to me like Vista had, was the start of a lot of good ideas, but when you first implement them, it was a terrible implementation of it. It took maybe the next one and the next OS to kind of learn from what they did. But still, I think there are things in Catalina that they did right, but I agree the, the interaction from the user interface has not been anything like it has in the past. Yeah. I, I just, I would, Oh my God. I, maybe I can send Panos a little uh, behind the scenes thing. Hey, can we do a PC versus Mac where we make fun of them approving and denying in Catalina versus windows 10? Cause windows 10 is kind of, we kind of figured it out. And then the windows 10, I mean, you still get those allows and stuff, but it's nowhere near as obtrusive. And I tell you that this is the problem on the Apple side is they, ne they had to grow up and get secure. And now what you're finding is that it's not so easy. Now they're my brethren from Cupertino, <laughs> but getting, what I will tell you is that we also said in the travel stuff, I, I told you guys that there was a thing that was the most important thing. And that was the, uh, the headphones. The second most important thing is this. It's the battery pack, the oh, travel battery pack. Yep. And I got a link and you can uh, click it if you want, Jim, which is, this is the RAV Power uh, 10,000 milliamp. When I was going to talk to you guys about this, I just bought it. I can tell you now I've actually had it for a while. This thing is great. It's twenty six ninety nine. And it, it has a full 18 watt power distribution. If you don't know what that means, it means it will charge your iPhone as fast as the fast charger on your, that you have. And it's a 10,000 milliamp. It also means that it will power other things that you, like you can actually plug it into an iPad Pro and charge an iPad Pro fully. So anything that uses an Apple um, 18 watt power supply or supports that, this thing's gonna drive it. Um, so if you wanna fast charge something, you need this. I, I found that I had these big, huge Hawken uh, bricks and things like, like this one that's huge. Um, and while that was great, what you really want is a 10,000 milliamp. And then what you also want is you want it to be able to uh, distribute 18 watts, but the other thing is it fast charges itself. So when you plug it in to charge it, it is fast. So if you look, I would tell you one thing, keep an eye on on these battery packs because I got burned. I bought like a whole bunch of them. And what you'll find is that the one, certain ones, and it not necessarily is even the even the price. You, know, you can't just go off a of price, but you need to take a look and say, what is the power input wattage and what is the power output wattage to make sure that you get one that is really solid. And this one I found uh, when I did the research for it and knew how I'd been messed up from all the others, I, I found that this one is really good. And for 26 bucks, I mean, it's a no brainer. So if you haven't, if you don't pretty have light. one. Pretty light. Yeah, yeah, it's a 10,000, so it's, yeah. it's not real heavy at all. So I can keep that in my bag. And it's nice because you can throw it in your back pocket and all. Now, I do not like the concept of, I have a, uh, a wireless charging power brick. The problem is, is it takes too long. If I'm using a power brick, it means I need to recover from battery quick. And so I don't want to carry it any longer than I have to. So one of those power bricks with the um, wireless charging, I, I just don't care for them so much. So okay. there's, um, your, there's your monster brick right there, the 3200 or 32,000. Yes, but right. look at this. So see, I wouldn't buy this one, six okay. amp output. So You're it's really like looking a, for the 18. Is that what you said? 18? Yeah, you really want the 18. 
And so you'll find that there might even be a newer version. See, if you scroll back up, look, it says there's a newer version of this. It's right, and I guarantee you, you click on that, and it's going to be an 18 water, I bet you. Uh, 65 watt. So that one can actually push 65 watts. So that would be a kickbot one. And if you notice, it's even got a power adapter on the on the side of it. Mm -hmm. So that one will actually let you plug in your laptop and charge it. Uh, if you if you have a 65 watt power adapter, of which did I mention the uh, Surface Pro X is a 65 watt charger to be able to quick charge it. So you don't need 65 watts to run it, but you could take this one and you could actually ch quick charge um, any of the Surface products. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, that's not a bad little little boy right there. It's a pretty but big it, brick, though. I mean, look at it's that a thing. big brick. <laughs> it's a pretty big brick, and it's 80 bucks. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have one that is, I, I could get it. It's an Iamudo one. This is actually a 30,000 amp and it, it has high output. Um, but the problem I have with it is it's still, um, actually, it's not great. Oh, that's input. I'm sorry. Output. Um, it's okay. It, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, it's way too heavy. And not to mention, if you go to China, then you'll have to stand and talk to somebody for like hours because you're only supposed to be able to travel with 26,400 milliamp battery or something like that. And if you carry that sucker into China and you try to bring it back, they'll let you go in perfectly fine. But when you come back, they're like, no, it's too big. And I'm like, oh, what? I'm taking it out of your country, <laughs> not in. And so... And, and they'll have like 15 people stand around and chat for like holding it and inspecting it. And then they'll just hand it back to you and say, you go now. <laughs> so, so just be aware, uh, don't travel to China with anything over 26,000 milliamps. So do a 20 or 22 just to be safe because they do inspect that. Um, all right, xCloud. Okay, we're gonna have to make this fast because we're running or we're gonna yes. run short on time. Yes, I'm going to tell you one last thing here is if you are looking for something to do xCloud on, I highly recommend that you go with the Samsung Galaxy Tab 5, what is it called, a Tab 5E. Um, this thing, uh, it, you can get like a little uh, keyboard thing for it. It is not really expensive. It is wonderful to play games on. You get this with a... Uh, a Bluetooth controller. And if you don't know the difference between an Xbox controller that supports Bluetooth and one that does not, the way to tell the difference is that there is, is the, where the shiny part is on the top. If the shiny part goes around the Xbox logo, then that is not a Bluetooth aware controller. And I had them out for you guys to see the difference between them. Well, I got one here. So is this one. Okay, so let's look at yours. That one is not a Bluetooth. That's what I figured. No. Okay, so the Bluetooth one will be shiny across the top of it. Um, and this is going to be important if anybody's using Xbox stuff. Cause... So, no, so no no here, right? I'm... Oh, that one? No, that one is no, it Bluetooth. Is. That one oh. is Bluetooth. Notice well, how, how the know? shiny. So notice that the shiny goes across the top. It doesn't come down around the Xbox logo and the Xbox button. So see, Jim, how my top... That Hold on. little shiny black plastic goes all the way down. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yours goes straight I, across. I got gotcha. you. This okay. this little no, this little bit right here. Wait, yes. what about this one? This one's kind of a this one's confusing, but it's the elite. I don't know if the elite. That's the original elite, right? I don't know on that one. I would have to research it. But yeah, original elite. I'm looking at the boxes. Whenever I look back here, guys, like Ecobee, I have to see what version I have because all my tech boxes are right up. There. So. So the key thing is be aware because they, they just released this in public preview from what I hear. So there's people who are really starting to get access to xCloud. Um, I would, you can do it on your phone. However, that tablet I showed you, they're, they're not really expensive. Um, they aren't LTE, but, but they're on Wi-Fi. And so if you're looking for a good travel tablet to play, um, the apps and everything that run on it, these things are really, really good. So um, I would say this is equivalent to an iPad, uh, like a, a higher end iPad, not a pro, but they are really good tablets. They're not stupid expensive and you can get it with the tablet and the keyboard. If you click that little button, 
Well, how much is the price point on tablet plus keyboard there, Jim? Mm, let's click on it right there. It is five twenty-seven. Oh no, you can get keyboard cheaper than that. Okay. So, but the the thing is, is that uh, with it you can get the Wi-Fi. It looks like they are going to sell it. They may have an LTE version that's come out since. Um, know that XCloud will run over either, and I've I've had access to it for a bit. I will tell you, it is shockingly good. Um, but what you're going to need is you're going to the best thing is is a tablet like that, especially because they support um, uh, this tablet supports the ability to sh to cast out to just about any TV. So if you're in a hotel and you want to cast out, but also be aware that you don't have to have a ton of power. Like the the processing is not done on the device. I, I know people who have been running on really slow old phones uh, to test. And so you're not gonna have a problem with the performance uh, from the tablet itself. But what I love about it is that the screen is a good widescreen aspect ratio and it's it's a good quality Samsung screen. And then the product itself is really good. Like it's got, a it's got a fingerprint reader sensor built right into the power button and everything. And it's actually way thinner than an iPad. Um, so if you're looking for something good, if you put it on the keypad, keypad stand, it's kind of nice because you can make it stand up uh, and things like that. But if you, you know, are looking for a good device for xCloud, I would highly recommend looking at that. Make sure you've got that Bluetooth compatible controller. Um, I think you can get one for about 39 bucks if you're looking for one. Um, and just make sure you have a spare one laying around because I, I, I don't like trying to pair it back and forth. I, I just bought a dedicated one and said, I'll throw that in my bag whenever I want to take it. And the games are, you know, perfectly fine. And you can get the little clip if you want the clip. I haven't played with the clip um, at this point, but it is it is weird to be playing on it, <laughs> on, on one of these things. Because uh, yeah, yeah. you're not used to, you're, you're actually kind of shocked at how good it is. I would say that the shooters are a little, in the original beta of it, it was a little bit laggy in the fact that you can tell, um, but I, I've seen vast improvement as it's been, be, uh, been evolving uh, on that. So I think we're gonna we're gonna be in a fine place. But uh, you know, haven't played Stadia, but I can say that this is actually a really awesome thing. Mike, any temptations on that with yeah, some definitely. of the renewed gaming that you're doing? Uh, well, yeah, because you know, last week was really my first time I've delved into PC gaming, and I've really been enjoying it uh, more than I thought I would. I have been a controller player, console player my entire life, never gamed on a computer, and I'm I'm kind of liking the the compatibility with certain stuff. I'm liking being able to stream. Uh, so I've been running Windows. So Streamlabs OBS has been great, but. Um, yeah, on the mobile side, for sure, I wish uh, as soon as it comes out, if it does ever come out for iPhone, I'll be all over it. I do not have any Android, tablet, phones, anything to run it on. So uh, just not able to test it out at the moment. But but yeah, like that. And um, you know, there's a lot of other companies, too, that are kind of coming out with this sort of stuff. But uh, xCloud, to me, it's just it's my native platform. I'm an Xbox user already. And, uh, you know, for the first time last night, this is something super simple, but I was playing Rocket League on my computer. And uh, I've totally forgot, hey, I'm on a Windows machine. I can just plug in my Xbox controller to my computer. And uh, I was able to play with the controller sitting here at the computer. So um, it's kind of a renewed love for me now, right? I, uh, it's been a lot of fun just kind of dive back into it and play, play some games that I wasn't able to so play. Great. So in the after show, we'll talk about the, um, the VR. How about sure. that? Sure. Yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I do yeah. want to hear about that. Sounds good. Sounds well, good. Well, Mike, you're keep we're keeping kind of track of your build in the yeah. Discord group, right? Yeah, we, well, yeah. Hardware well, section. I'll, I'll do there. another update because uh, they were all laughing at me. I was on Twitch last night and I was talking to them, and they're like, "So wait, is this an entirely different computer than you had last week when you said you had a Frankenstein build?" I'm like, "Yeah, new case, new motherboard, new <laughs> CPU, new RAM." He's new addicted. Case. There He's is addicted. literally nothing well, this week. now the same. The entire computer, actually, the guts are. You can see it. The guts of that, that's the motherboard out there from that Dell. Already so that, that show is already worthless. Last week's show. You know, they, they said, would it be totally worthless? So you got rid of that stuff. Um, <laughs> no, it was a great learning process. I learned yeah. so much of what I needed to do. Yeah. But yes, we are keeping track of that in the Discord, uh, usually in the gaming tab, sometimes the hardware. So if you guys are interested in following that story, I'll give you guys the update there. Okay. 
Sounds good. Well, uh, Dwayne will hang around for some post show. We'll talk a little, uh, a little VR when we go in there. A couple reminders before we go, and we want to thank you, the financial supporters of this show. We do it through Patreon each and every month. It's just awesome. You guys are rock solid and consistent. If you want to join us, we got some five dollar a month plans. If you want to go out there for a month or whatever, whatever you want to do, no pressure. I don't care. No, there's no support shaming here. You can do whatever you want. Um, the average guy.tv slash Patreon will get you there if you want to do that as well. Just know that helps pay for the app and some other stuff that we do here. Uh, Mike mentioned about joining the Discord group. You can get that done as well. If you want to contact me, send me an email, Jim at the average guy.tv. I do like your emails. Neil, who we read uh, last week, I think, on the show, responded back and said, thanks. I actually didn't expect to get that read on the show. If it's super interesting, uh, chances are we're going to read it. So uh, join us that way. Jim at TheAverageGuy.tv if you want to send in your stuff. Maybe you don't want to do social at all or Discord or Facebook at all. That's okay. Just send me an email. Love to have that um, as well. Hey, do me a favor. Subscribe on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, just click the subscribe button. I guess it's down there, over there. And uh, apparently that means something. So subscribe so you know when I publish things that are new, you can go out there. Most of the time, I think it's more fun to watch us than it is to listen to it. But I know many of you listen to it, and that's that's okay um, as well. Just a reminder, the Average TV platform, both web and media hosting, powered by Maple Grove Partners. Secure, reliable, high-speed hosting from people that you know and trust. And, of course, that's Christian. A bunch of upgrades going in over there, and he's doing a bang-up job. Plans start as little as 10 bucks a month for uh, for some pretty great hosting. And uh, he does a lot of custom stuff as well. Check out Maple Grove Partners. Dot com and then don't forget to download the app. I just reached out to him for a support yeah. ticket. I actually wanted to switch up the domain I was using. Yeah, I tell you, just super easy. I logged into Maple Grove, did a ticket. Hey, can we switch the domain over? Is that something you can do pretty easily? Yep. When do you want it effective? Uh, and he responded within, I'd say about uh, five minutes. He had already had a response <laughs> to me. And I mean, this guy's got a. I mean, he's uh, this is not his like full time full time job. No, and no, uh, he... it responded within five minutes. Yeah. When do you want it effective? And he just does it. Like yeah. he is super responsive to support. Uh, great service over there. Yeah. So check right. it out. Maple, MapleGrovePartners.com. Mike recommends it. We are live and we're staying uh, on Thursdays. We're live 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, except those Thursdays where I have things going on. So I don't know why I just didn't think of that to begin with. But we are live. Hopefully, hopefully I didn't scare you. We are live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, because it would have been weird to say every Wednesday. I just, I'm not, that's like cheating on the day. Like I, I just, I was afraid to say every Wednesday because for 10 years I've said every Thursday. So we're staying Thursdays. There'll be some Wednesdays. Follow me on Twitter. If you want to know, I'll, I'll try to, I'm not very good at that, but if you want to know, uh, we'll try and tweet it out that way. Um, and we'll be back next week. I'm trying to think here. If you're listening live, stay around for the post show next week, just to give you a little heads up. I should have had this ready, but I did it, but I'm sure it's going to be pretty good. Um, oh, actually, next week we're off, Mike. So you get it. You get a. Oh, um, okay. you get, hey, you want to go? You want to go Wednesday with me next week? I believe that works. Can you do that? I think we actually. Yeah. I think I actually yeah. asked you that question already, and I think you said yes. Yeah, I, so, I did. So next week, <sighs> lots of things going on. Um, so next week will be Wednesday. Yeah, when we do this, the thirtieth. And if you want to join us out here on Wednesday, twenty ninth. Okay. Yeah, is it the 29th or the thirtieth? Thirtieth is a Thursday. So okay, on Wednesday it's gonna be the twenty ninth. So January 29th, next week, Wednesday, we'll be live out here just because I've got something going on on Thursday. So we'll test it out. You can join us here next week. If you're listening live, stay around. With that, we'll say goodnight, everybody.